Did you know that the median base fund and engineer salary in major tech clubs in the US is $153,000 a year? That does not even consider stock options, which are granted at large companies. At the median, you can expect to make $50,000 a year. That still needs to include other benefits like signing bonuses, 401k match, free food, perks, and so much more. That means the median front-end engineer total compensation can easily exceed $250,000 a year annually. But how can I ever join a top company like that? You have to be a genius to work there. While top companies attract great talent, you do not have to be a genius to work there. In fact, preparing for front-end engineering interviews differs significantly from the work you will actually do on a day-to-day -day basis as a software engineer. It's a game that if you don't get good at, you'll get left behind. It might seem quite daunting and tedious at first, but with the right mentorship and guidance from someone who has gone through the process themselves, you'll have all the tools you need to succeed and thrive. I wish a video existed like this when I started or last year when I was interviewing at major companies. I happened to land several top of the band job offers. Whether you're a new grad or you want to switch professions and get into a front-end development role, or you're an existing principal engineer seeking new opportunities, this guide is for you. Hi, my name is Shivam. I have been a front-end engineer for over a decade now, and I'm also the founder of frontendly.com, an all-in-one platform to help front-end engineers prepare for coding interviews. This video covers several concepts at a very high level. First, we'll cover data structures and algorithms needed for front-end engineering interviews. Two, we'll cover HTML fundamentals. Three, we'll cover CSS fundamentals. Four, we'll cover JavaScript fundamentals. Five, we'll cover front-end trivia questions. Six, we'll cover JavaScript coding questions. Seven, app design questions. Eight, front-end system design questions. Nine, behavioral questions. And 10, finally, the offer and how to negotiate the offer. So there's obviously gonna be a lot of topics covered in this video, and I can't go in depth in every single topic in this one video, but if you wanna gain deeper insights to any of the topics discussed in this video, I created an entirely free front-end interview handbook which can be found using the link in the description. Before starting the front-end interview process, you should ensure you feel confident or semi-confident in your abilities to interview well. One mistake to avoid is to start interviewing immediately without preparing at all. If you have the privilege to spend some time preparing, I highly, highly recommend spending at least three to six months before interviewing, depending on your seniority level. Another mistake to avoid is that a lot of people think all you need to know for front-end interviews is preparing for React.js interviews, which is a big no-no. At big tech companies, we expect you to not only rely on any framework, as they can change and evolve at any time. Instead, we expect you to know the core fundamentals inside and out, and perhaps one day you can build up the next version of React yourself. At a high level, you want to ensure your fundamentals are strong during front-end interviews. You can generally be asked a domain-specific question for the front-end, to a general computer science related question, like reversing a linked list. Real talk though, as a senior front-end engineer, if I encounter a strict link code style question for an interview, to me, that's a big red flag from an interviewer standpoint, as it shows me that the company lacks competency on how to interview front-end candidates properly. But that rant and video is for another day. I am curious to hear your thoughts on this controversial subject. Please leave a comment on this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Regardless, you must make sure your fundamentals are solid. Focus on basic data structures and algorithms knowledge first, such as A, stacks and queues, B, basic tree traversal techniques, C, hash maps and their applications, D, recursion and its use cases, E, memoization and caching, and F, the big O notation to efficiently analyze algorithms. You can find a free guide on how to prepare for data structures and algorithms by visiting frontendly.com, clicking on our free interview handbook, and clicking on the data structures and algorithms link. Now let's talk about number two, your JavaScript, HTML, CSS fundamentals. You must feel confident building UIs using the three languages mentioned above. You don't need to memorize the entire language, but the key here is to remember the high-level concepts. Be sure to practice the concepts by building a small feature. Maybe perhaps you fetch a data from a source and eventually render it on a user interface. Again, you can find a free guide on how to prepare for your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript fundamentals by visiting frontendly.com and clicking on the frontend interview handbook and then clicking on the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript fundamentals. Number three is frontend trivia questions. Be prepared to discuss specific frontend trivia questions. For example, for CSS, you might be asked, what are CSS properties? What's the difference between position absolute, static, relative, and sticky? What are pseudo elements? And what are pseudo classes? And then for HTML, you might be asked, what's the difference between IDs and classes in HTML? How would you include JavaScript in a web page? How would you create a forms in HTML? And then for JavaScript, you might be asked questions like, what are closures? 
What is the difference between .call, .imply, and .bind? What is this keyword in JavaScript? And then for React, you might be asked questions like, what are some of the most common lifecycle methods in a React component? You might also get asked, what are React hooks? Name some standard hooks, and what are their advantages? Or you could be asked questions like, what's the benefit of using use memo in React? When would you use use memo versus use callback? You can find the most commonly asked trivia questions by visiting front end lead, clicking on the trivia problems tab, and viewing the problems there with their in-depth solutions to each individual problem. Now let's move on to number four, which is JavaScript interview questions. Generally, you can be asked anything from building a UI in React or Vanilla.js or solving a coding problem like building a utility function in JavaScript. The trick here is to balance your time. Spend 20% of it building some basic UIs and games like building a photo gallery or building a tic-tac-toe game or building an autocomplete search widget and spend 80% of your time solving coding problems like building a dot map, dot filter, dot reduce in JavaScript, building a memoized store in JavaScript, build a debouncer in JavaScript. You can find the most commonly asked JavaScript interview questions by navigating to funnily.com, clicking on the coding problems tab and start solving the problems directly within the platform using our built-in code editor. If you get stuck, not a problem. Click on the solutions tab and find a solution with an article explaining how to solve the problem. If you're still stuck, don't worry. Watch a comprehensive video guide for most problems to help you learn it well. Next, let's move on to app design questions. These are the most fun and my personal favorite. During some interviews, the interviewee might ask you to live code a small app and build things like a small game like Blackjack, or they might ask you to build a small UI like Instagram, or build a news feed, etc. Keep in mind, you may get asked to build it in vanilla JavaScript or React, so pick whatever you feel the most confident in. You can find the top app design questions by visiting friendly.com, clicking on the coding problems, and then filtering by app design questions. Let's move on to number six, which is front-end system design questions. This one may be more applicable to senior and staff level engineers, but be prepared to design and architect the front end of a large application, such as designing a Facebook newsfeed, or designing Instagram, or designing an autocomplete widget, or maybe designing an e-commerce store. For a full list of possible front-end system design questions and their guides, visit frontendly.com and click on the front-end system design questions. And there you'll find a completely free 40-minute guide to front-end system design fundamentals. Now let's move on to number seven, which are behavioral questions. Here, the hiring manager will see if you're a good culture fit for the company. They will generally ask you questions about your resume or projects. It's best to prepare using the star behavioral format for responses, whereas S stands for situation. Describe the context in which you are performing a task. T stands for task. Explain what the actual task at hand was and what was involved. A stands for action. Detail the specific actions you took to address that task. And R stands for result. Share the outcomes of your actions and highlight the impact of your work. You can find a full list of the most frequently asked behavioral questions on front and lead by visiting the behavioral questions tab and exploring the questions with solutions there. And number eight, finally, the offer stage. If you made it this far, first of all, congrats to you. Second, hopefully something from this video helped you get there. So perhaps you can spread the love by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel to get more content like this in the future. I will be making a separate video on how to handle negotiation stage itself but let's just talk about some high level ideas. First of all, try and set your final interviews so they're scheduled around the same time so that when you get the offer, you can use each offer as leverage for negotiating other offers. And next, don't be the first to reveal what number you'll be happy with with your salary. You have no obligation to do so, even if they put a lot of pressure on you. Your goal here is to extract the highest possible offer. If you're really concerned, give a range, but never the exact numbers. Next up, don't lie about competing offers. It may be tempting, but recruiters have friends at other companies, so they can easily tell if you're dishonest. You can find a lot more tips and advice on how to negotiate offers by visiting friendly.com, then clicking on the front end interview handbook, and finally navigating to the salary negotiation guide. And there you have it. Now you have all the tools you need to prep for interviews. Easy, right? I know, I know. It's quite overwhelming. It was for me too. But I hope this video and front end lead can help you on your journey to land your dream job and thriving at your work. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and liking this video. And also, please check out frontendly.com to get really in-depth insights for preparing for fun and interviews. Till next time, peace.